Italy's parliament has voted to cut the number of elected lawmakers by more than a third, approving a reform championed by the anti-establishment five-star movement that could profoundly impact the political landscape. The law, which was backed by all the main parties, calls for the number of seats in the lower house to be reduced to 400 from the current 630, while the upper house senate will be sliced back from 200 seats from 315. Italy has one of the highest numbers of parliamentary seats in the world and ranks second in Europe for its number of seats only after the UK, but still substantially ahead of Luxembourg. Euronews' Italian correspondent Giorgio Orlandi reports from Rome. The Italian parliament has voted in favour of a reform to cut 345 lawmakers that will mainly trigger a long constitutional procedure with a series of measures that will have to be voted between now and December, the main one being a new electoral reform. And that is because cutting the number of lawmakers does affect popular representation. Now, this is a measure that, according to the Five Star Movement, will help the state save at least 100 million euros each year. But the roadmap though could change if the reform will be subject to popular consultation, a possible scenario according to the Constitution. I've been speaking to a few people here in Rome and they seem to have mixed feelings about the reform. Here is what they had to say. Money that will be saved can be used to upgrade the existing road network or build new roads. It will be used for the health sector or new infrastructures. This is money that will be used for Italian citizens. I don't know how much of a real saving this measure can bring about going from 630 MPs to 400 and from 315 senators to 200. I have doubts over the money that we can save here, but if this is what Italians want, then it's fine. A reduced number of lawmakers both in the lower house and in the Senate will help everyone work better together in harmony and the government can last longer. Also, because there are other democratic countries where there are less lawmakers and we can't say that these are dictatorships. It is a measure that has been promoted to impress voters that won't have any concrete impact on the way Parliament works. Analysts think it is very unlikely that the measure will be rejected by a popular consultation and if everything goes as planned, the reform will come into effect after 2023 when the next government will take office. Well, for more on the plans, we're joined from Rome by Cecilia Sotoslotta, Assistant Professor of International Relations at the American University of Rome. Thanks for speaking to us this morning. Uh, as we just heard there, there has been some criticism that these plans could erode democracy by reducing representation. What's your view on it? Well, um, quite frankly, I would start from the point that uh, the savings that will be brought about by this reform uh, is actually... Uh, negligible, to be honest. So um, uh, the estimate is that this reform will produce a saving of about 60 million euros per year. Uh, just to give an idea to the audience, the uh, current uh, costs for operating the chamber, the only the lower chamber uh, of the Italian parliament is above 900 million. So it's really a negligible amount. Uh, we had just, uh, our reporter there mentioned yeah. that it might be yeah. about 100 million euros a, a year. Uh, when it comes to actual implementing policy, any cost saving for Italy, which is in a country that is suffering a lot from its economic situation right now, any saving surely going to be a, a benefit, not a hindrance? Uh, well, it depends very much on the cost, on the uh, cost opportunity, you know what I mean? Because uh, for instance, if these uh, savings, which, as I said, in the larger picture is, is really irrelevant, uh, goes to uh, have, an, on to have an impact on the quality of uh, uh, political representation in the country, then that's a problem. For instance, again, just to give you a few figures, uh, right now, the, well, up until yesterday at least, uh, we had one member of the Senate, for instance, one senator, uh, every 188,000 uh, inhabitants. We will have one senator for over 300,000 inhabitants. So if the question is to really, as the Five Star Movement claims, to sort of, um, you know, get the parliamentary system, like the parliament, closer to its citizens, 
uh, then to be honest, the it, it, it is questionable to take such a measure because the so risk is that... you're clearly very, you're suspicious of these motives saying this is about saving money. So what do you think the real motivation behind this move was? But it's very clear. I mean, the, uh, the main promoter of this reform is the Five Star Movement. They are uh, desperately, desperately in need to uh, show to their uh, electorate that they are delivering on something. And this because, of course, um, they have been uh, losing uh, a lot in terms of public support in the past few months. So uh, I would say it's certainly uh, their, their uh, priority to show that they are uh, doing what they promised. And at the same time, it is interesting to notice that the Democratic Party, which is now a partner in a coalition government with the Five Star Movement, changed their you know, views about this measure. They opposed it before, and now they joined the coalition and they are accepting this. Um, and this is uh, one of the reasons could be that they are, they, uh, the Five Star Movement guaranteed that these will be followed by a broader set of mm. institutional reforms, which is one of the priorities of uh, of the Democratic Party. I'm afraid we're going to have to leave it there. Thank you, though, for talking to us. Cecilia Sotolotta, Assistant Professor of International Relations at the American University of Rome.